Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be taking a look at how to use the smoke simulation tools with Eevee in Blender 2.8. One of the best things about using the smoke simulation functionality with Eevee is the ability to preview its behaviour in real time. As well as this, what's also useful is having complete control over the level of detail across both the rendered and solid viewport modes. What you're seeing on the screen now is a demonstration scene that I've created just for this tutorial. The reason I've built this scene is because I think it's a lot more interesting and fun to demonstrate the potential of these simulation features in the context of an actual piece of artwork. Of course you can download this scene completely for free from the link in the description so you can play around with it and see how everything was set up. We will return to this scene later on in the video after we've taken a look at the fundamentals as well as how we would go about creating a smoke simulation in Blender from scratch. So let's get started. Typically smoke simulations have always had a knack for being quite tedious to set up. And this is because they require the creation of different types of control objects that tell the simulation where it's allowed to create and simulate data. All smoke simulations are done inside of what's called a domain, which is a box-shaped region that defines the boundaries of where the smoke is allowed to exist. Thankfully, in Blender there is a system that lets you set up a template smoke simulation with only a few clicks. First of all, you need to create what we'll refer to as the flow object, which is where the smoke is going to be coming from. A simple plane will do, but you can make it any shape you like. Just for demonstration purposes, I will make mine more rectangular. Then with that object selected, you can go and click on Object, then Quick Effects, and then Quick Smoke. If you do not have an object selected before choosing this, then you will see an error message that tells you that a mesh has not been selected. What this operation will do is create a wireframe cube in your scene, which acts as the domain that the smoke simulation will be contained inside of. You will also notice that it set our original flow object to a wireframe shading mode as well. Now if we start the timeline from the beginning and press play, we can see the smoke simulation running in real time, with some pretty good performance at that. It's important to know that if your flow objects are not placed inside of the domain while the simulation is running, then you will not see any smoke being simulated. If we have the domain selected and then take a look at the materials tab, you can see that the quick setup has automatically created a material for our smoke, appropriately called smoke domain material. If we take a look at the nodes for this material, then you can see that it's just a simple principled volume shader hooked up to the volume of the material. So far we've been looking at this smoke simulation in the solid view mode, but what this means is that if we want to see the smoke in the EV rendered mode, then we will need to enable volumetrics in the render settings. Then if we play the timeline, we can see the real time smoke simulation with EV. You can also change the color of the smoke for these nodes as well. Ok so now that we've got that set up, with the domain selected let's take a quick look at the smoke settings in the physics tab. Notice that under the type drop down domain is selected, and if we click on our flow object you'll notice that the type has been appropriately set to flow. This is how the simulation knows what objects serve which purpose. Let's say I created a new object, a sphere this time, then gave it the smoke physics component and set the mode to flow. Since it's contained inside of the domain object, when I run the simulation again, we can see that the smoke starts emitting from the surface of the mesh. I can also press G to grab it and move it around in real time. The smoke simulation also reacts to the force objects that we can easily create from the Shift A menu. This is nice because it means there's consistency with the physics system in Blender. The same force objects that we can use to manipulate cloth and rigid body objects we can also use for smoke, which makes it easier to build complex scenes than make use of all of them at the same time. Unfortunately this consistency with physics does not extend to collision, which I'll explain now. If you want the smoke simulation to interact and collide with other objects in the scene, then the most obvious thing to do would be to give the object a collision physics component. However this is where the consistency of the physics system breaks down a bit because giving the object a traditional collision component won't actually affect the smoke simulation. Instead, what you need to do is give it a smoke component and then set the type to collision. Then you can see as we move the object around it starts to affect the smoke simulation. Ok so before we swap back over to our nice demonstration scene, let's just take a quick look at some of the behavioural properties for the domain. If we make sure that our domain is selected, we can go to the behaviour section of the smoke simulation properties and take a look at the values here. All of these are described well in the documentation for the smoke domain, so I will leave a link in the description if you want to use that as a reference, but I'll briefly give you a description of how they work now. Density describes how dense the smoke is compared to the ambient air around it, and temperature difference describes how the smoke is affected by temperature, so the higher it is the more the smoke will rise. Note that you can also set these values for the individual flow objects if you click on them. If you have multiple flow objects with inconsistent temperature differences to the ambient air temperature then they will mix. To demonstrate this I'm just going to increase the vorticity to 4 which essentially increases the turbulence in the smoke. Then let's say I give our sphere flow object a high temperature difference to something like 10 
and then give our original rectangular plane a low temperature difference of 0.1. Then if I move the sphere in line underneath the plane and play the simulation, then you can see the effect that it has with all the hot air punching through and creating all this turbulence. Now let's take a look at the dissolve section. If you enable this, what it does is allow the smoke to dissipate over time. The lower the time value, the faster it will dissipate. So if I enable it and play the simulation now, you can see how we get this wispy effect. Okay, so we're going to swap back to our demonstration scene now to talk about the volumetric settings, level of detail, and how to bake the simulation. You can see that what I've done here is create a sort of industrial environment with some piping and smoke rising from the side of the walkway. If we take a look at the smoke domain settings, you can see that I have dissolve enabled with a time value of 35 and a vorticity value of 3. This helps to give the result a wispy turbulent effect as it rises into the light. The piping elements on the right and the wall behind them also have smoke collision components on them to help push the smoke out to the left. You might notice that the property values on the smoke are greyed out however, and that's because I've already baked the simulation. What that means is we can watch the result back at a smooth speed, and the resulting data of the bake is saved separately from the blend file so it can be used elsewhere. To bake the simulation, you need to go to the cache section of the simulation settings. Since I already have a bake, the option it gives me is to delete the current bake, but if I press that then it will give me the option to change behavioural values and create another one. If you press the bake button, it will cycle through all of the frames specified in the simulation start and end values, and output the data to a point cache if that's the format you have active. Once the bake is done, you can press play on the timeline to watch the result. But let's take a look at the section called high resolution. Generally, if you are creating a bake for the simulation, you want it to have much more detail than the preview in the viewport. To explain what high resolution does, we'll need to talk about the structure of the domain. Smoke simulation inside of the domain is a voxel-based system, which means that the space is divided into many different cells. The more cells that the domain is subdivided into, the more detailed the smoke simulation will be. At the top of the smoke simulation settings, there is a value called resolution divisions. By default, it will be on a value of 32, which is suitable for real-time previews. You can think of this as a three-dimensional resolution of the domain. The higher the value, the more detailed the smoke simulation will be. You need to be careful with increasing this value because even a small increase can drastically reduce the performance. It would be quite annoying having to go and change this to a higher value every time you wanted to do a bake, and then change it back down to a lower value afterwards if you wanted to do more experimentation in real time. This is where the high resolution setting comes in handy. What it does, through the use of a noise method, is it enhances the resolution of the result without physically computing more smoke. In the noise method dropdown, you can choose the type to use. You have two options available to you. On the documentation is an image comparing the different styles. The resolution divisions value essentially acts as a factor multiplier for the original resolution divisions. So let's say I set it to 2 in the high resolution settings, then we can expect it to try and double the detail of the simulation when high resolution is activated. If you use this, then when playing the timeline you can see an immediate drop in performance. Again, be careful when changing these values, I would say only use the high resolution when you are planning on doing a bake of the simulation. When you download this demo scene from the link in the description, I will have it set up so that no smoke simulation has been baked, and the reason for that is because the output data of the bake can take up quite a large amount of space. In fact, I think the bake for this scene normally comes to around 512 megabytes. You can of course play the smoke in real time, but if you want to play a higher detailed smooth version of a bake, then all you need to do is make sure that the smoke domain is selected, and then press the bake button under cache. Then you'll be able to play the timeline and watch the detailed smoke rise. One thing you might notice is that if you play the timeline, the smoke is actually quite blurry until you pause the timeline again. This is due to the sampling of the renderer. As soon as we pause, we allow Eevee to take more samples of what's in the scene to give us a more accurate result. You can control the samples of the renderer in the render settings panel under sampling. Here you can choose separate sample values for the viewport and render. Another factor that plays a role in how detailed the smoke simulation will look both in the viewport and in the final render is the tile size value under the volumetric settings. If you've watched my tutorial on creating nebula effects in Eevee, then you will remember how important this value is to the level of detail. Back then I warned against going any lower than a value of 4 due to the performance drop, since the nebula effects were quite intensive for the volumetric system. But in the case of this demo, the smoke is nowhere near as intensive. If your computer is powerful enough, then you might be able to run at a tile size of 2 with a pretty solid frame rate. Of course results will vary from user to user. What I'll do is put a comparison on the screen, showing a render of the same frame using two different tile sizes, one at a value of 16 and the other at a value of 2. So I think that will wrap it up for this video. Don't forget to download the demonstration resources for free from the link below. 
A massive thank you to all of the people who have given donations on the previous resources. The support is very much appreciated and there will be more good content coming for you in the future. Don't forget to tag me in your work so I can see what cool things you've been making. You can also follow me on social media to stay up to date and join our Discord server to take part in discussions, share your work and get sneak previews and upcoming content. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.